77% of us do it frequently for pleasure. Walking, that is. In fact, it's the most popular outdoor activity in Britain. But this wasn't always the case. In the past, wild landscapes were seen as barren and dangerous places to be crossed rather than enjoyed. But with the arrival of industrialization in the 19th century, things changed. People began turning to the countryside for rest and recreation, an escape from the grim conditions in towns and cities. And so, this is the story of our growing love of walking, and the role the Ramblers Association has played in it. Getting at the countryside was never an issue, until the countryside became hard to get at. The 1800s saw increasing numbers of paths blocked up, as new ideas about privacy spread and landowners became obsessed with poaching and game. Some even used man traps. This provoked outrage from walkers and over the next 100 years, rambling groups formed across the country in protest. As the century turned, clashes between walkers and gamekeepers increased. One conflict led to a well-publicised mass trespass on Kinder Scout Derbyshire in 1932. Despite the imprisonment of several ramblers, a wave of public sympathy highlighted the event as a landmark in walking history, providing an important boost to the growing access movement. As time went on, local rambling groups combined efforts until finally forming a national body in the 1930s. In the first year of its life, the Ramblers Association had almost 1,200 members and over 300 affiliated clubs. It grew steadily, taking on Tom Stevenson as secretary in 1948. Tom famously campaigned for the UK's first long-distance footpath. Finally, in 1965, 30 years after he'd first suggested the idea, the 250-mile Pennine Way was created. After vigorous campaigning, 1949 marked a great year for walkers, with the foundation of 10 new national parks. Importantly, footpaths were now also to be recorded on definitive maps, securing their long-term future. Without the work of Rambler's volunteers to make sure this happened over the next 50 years, many paths we walk today would have disappeared. The 60s and 70s saw good developments for walkers. Rambler's persuaded Ordnance Survey to include definitive footpaths on its maps, for the first time letting walkers know precisely where they had a right to walk and more lobbying forced county councils to signpost their footpaths. Momentum continued in the 80s and 90s, with Rambler's walking groups introduced as membership grew. After decades of campaigning, the year 2000 brought a victory for the access movement, with new laws providing the right to walk in some of Britain's most wild and rugged landscapes. Not many people know this, but before the Countryside and Rights of Way Act, the public had no legal right of access to commons. This is Ranmore Common in Surrey, and I used to come walking here when I was a child and wander over the whole of the common. It's a great place. But about 10 years ago, a sign went up saying, this common is private land, keep out. And overnight, the public found that they could no longer come and enjoy this common. And there was absolutely nothing that they could do about it. But thanks to the Ramblers Association and their campaigning work, we all now have the legal right to roam over this common, every common, mountains, moorlands, heath, downlands. That's some of the most stunning countryside in England and Wales, over a million hectares of it. From its small beginnings in 1935, 
The Ramblers today has a membership of around 140,000 and more than 800 affiliated groups. Over the last seven decades we've done great things for Britain's walking environment, protecting rights of way and helping to establish some of our most treasured outdoor spaces. However, there's still a lot to be done. In our fast-paced world, being able to enjoy the benefits of walking and the beauty and tranquility of the countryside is more important than ever. In future, we want everyone to have the general right to walk along the coastline in England and Wales, something that we do not currently have. We are also working to preserve as many of our ancient footpaths as possible, which risk being lost to future generations forever unless they are mapped by the year 2026. Protecting our natural heritage will continue to be at the heart of our work. In 1999, the government announced its intention to make the South Downs a national park. We're working to make sure that this promise is not forgotten. Finally, as soaring levels of inactivity and obesity bring wider recognition of the benefits of walking, we're busy lobbying government to improve conditions for walkers to get more people walking. Our goals are simple to help everyone enjoy walking and to protect the outdoors for walkers today and tomorrow. If you believe in our work, then please support us by becoming a member. We are a charity and rely entirely on membership funds to continue our valuable work.